In part three of lecture nine, we will discuss page replacement algorithms. Imagine a system where we have 10 processes, each of which have 10 pages of code and data. In most cases, they may each only need a small number of pages to run through their successful conclusions. But this may not be the case all the time. In some instances, they may need all their pages. Then, what do you do? We must expect that sooner or later, probably sooner, we will need to replace the pages that are currently in memory with newer pages that need to be loaded into memory. This replacement will be because there simply are not enough available frames. The ideal situation will be if we can make the optimum choice and replace the page in memory that will have the longest elapsed time before its next reference. But this is very difficult, if not impossible, to determine. I would have to trace through each process to see where the next reference is. That means anticipating any jumps around in the program that there may be. It may mean knowing when, what new values will be loaded into registers that will be used as base registers, and so on. In reality, we cannot depend on such a strategy because we will not be able to determine the optimum page to replace. So we'll have to choose another criterion that is more realistic. The most common strategies are listed on the slide. FIFO, first in, first out, seems to be the most logical at first glance because the earliest references are less likely to come up again in the future. But that really isn't true, as we will see. LRU, least recently used, is a better choice because it assumes that how recently a page was used is an indicator of the probability that it will be used soon. This is a clearly better criterion than when we first loaded the page into physical memory. We'll look at two other strategies, least frequently and most frequently used, which use the frequency of references over some time frame as a benchmark. In the former case, we will assume that the pages not used that much lately are good candidates. In the latter case, we will assume that anything used that much later is less likely to see such usage in the future. Let's take a detailed look at these strategies. Before we can discuss which page replacement algorithm works best, we need some way to measure their effectiveness. The best way is to take a look at some sample set of memory references and see which does the best job of having the right pages in memory at the right times with the fewest number of page faults. Before we do this, we need to take our sample set of memory references and condense it down to a set of page numbers because even if we have different memory references without duplication, we may still have duplicate page references. And this is what really counts. In the example on this slide, we have four kilobytes per page. So our string breaks down in the fashion that you see. We will use this string to generate a series of different scenarios based on different page replacement algorithms. Our goal is to see which will produce the smallest number of page faults. There is a corollary to this. If we use more frames, there should be fewer page faults. It will become clear soon that there is an exception to that rule. But in general, we will want to be sure that processes that use a larger number of different pages get a larger number of frames. This will ensure 
that we minimize their page faults. Our entire reference string is seven, zero, one, two, zero, three, zero, four, two, three, zero, three, two, one, two, zero, one, seven, zero, one. Obviously, zero, one, and two seem to show up more often than the others, but the order in which they come makes a big difference in terms of what should come next. In the FIFO algorithm, all that matters is the page that has been in memory the longest will be replaced first. This is based on the idea that the oldest page is the least likely to be used again that soon. But it really isn't true. The oldest page may even have been used fairly recently and may be used quite soon. We'll see in a moment that this is in fact what happens. We'll start off by loading in page seven, then page zero and page one. Since the next page is page two and there are no more available frames, we'll replace the oldest frame, frame seven. The next page reference doesn't require replacing a page since page zero is already in memory. But the one after that does require us to replace page zero since it's the oldest page in memory. But one reference later, we will need it again. We will see this pattern, replacing a page right before we need it several times. In all, this algorithm generates 15 page faults. If we had six frames available, there would have been only six page faults, one for each of the pages in the sequence. This also demonstrates what we said about an increase in pages leading to a drop in page faults. Every now and then you run into the exception to the rule. The rule that more frames lead to fewer page faults has an exception known as Belady's anomaly. An anomaly is something out of the ordinary that normally does not happen. But using a FIFO replacement algorithm, it is possible to have a reference string for which a slightly larger number of frames will lead to a slightly larger number of page faults because of the order in which the page faults occur. It is caused by the situation that we saw before where pages are replaced slightly ahead of their next use. A slight increase in frames can cause this in certain cases. It doesn't disprove our rule, only the desirability of this algorithm. The optimal page replacement algorithm, in theory, would look for the page that has the longest wait before its next reference. Again, the first four page faults are handled the same way, although the fourth is a little different. While seven may have been the first in, it is the first out because it will not be used again for a very long time. When three is needed, we replace the one because there will be another eight page references before it is used again, more than for two or zero. Two shows up three references later. Zero shows up five references later. When page four is needed, pages two, three, and zero are the next memory references. Zero becomes the best candidate for replacement. While this seems like it isn't much better, optimal page replacement only requires nine page faults compared to 15 page faults for FIFO. The least recently used algorithm assumes that the less recently a page has been used, the more likely that it will not be used too soon. Page seven is the first page replaced because it was the least recently used. 
When page three is first loaded into a frame, it replaces page one because page zero was more recently used even though it was loaded first. This is not as good as optimal page replacement, but it is better than FIFO. This only required nine page faults. And unlike optimal page replacement, it is easy to keep track of how recently each page was used. How do we keep track of what was most recently used? We can either keep a counter of each page reference or place them on a stack. Counting algorithms are based on the idea that the recent usage of any particular page is a good indicator of whether it is likely to be used again soon. It requires that we keep track of the usage of each page. The most common algorithms are least frequently used and most frequently used. Least frequently used assumes that the page has seen little usage and will continue to be lightly used in the immediate future, making it an excellent candidate for replacement. Most frequently used takes the opposite approach. It assumes that these pages have been heavily used and the portion of the program where they will get such heavy usage has passed. The fact that their popularity is over means that they will not be used again too soon, and they are reasonable choices for replacement. We will look at the same reference string with the following table. We list the counts of references for each page of the program. Obviously, we really don't care about pages 5 and 6, since they are not in our string. But let's note that the most frequently used page is page 7, and the least frequently used page is page 4. Here, we'll start two page references later than in the other examples, because we're going to assume that this process has not just started running. When we have the first reference to page 2, we need to determine which page to replace. The obvious choice is page 1, which has been used the least number of times. The next page reference does not cause a page fault, because 0 is already in memory, but the one after that, where we need page 3, does cause a page fault, with page 2 being replaced, because it had the fewest times used. Two page references later, when we need to swap in page 4, page 3 is replaced because it is the least recently used. Is this a good algorithm? That depends on the overall pattern of usage. In this example, we keep page 7 in memory when we will only use it one more time. And we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 constantly going in and out of memory. But it only has 10 page faults in a stretch where the optimal page replacement algorithm, our absolute best, had seven. That's not too bad. In the most frequently used case, we knock page seven out of memory almost immediately because it is the most heavily used, and this seems like a good idea. It's only used one more time. We then replace page 0 with page 3 right before we are about to use it again. Overall, this does not seem to work so well in our example, because the most frequently used pages are still heavily used. But this might not be the case if the reference string were different.